In this video, I will show you how to solve a 2x2 two two system equations by graphing. And I will also show you guys the three possible situations that we will encounter with. And let's look at the first one. To solve a system equations by graphing, we are going to first graph the first equation and then graph the second equation together on the same xy plane. And we will be looking for the point of intersections, if there is any, right? However, the first equation is not ready for us to graph because we want to graph the equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. So let's write this down right here, negative 2x plus 2y, this is equal to 8. I want to isolate the y first. That means we show plus 2x on both sides, and we will have 2y, and that's equal to 2x, and that's plus 8. And then, this is 2 times y, so divide everything by 2. This and that will cancel, likewise, divide this by 2, divide that by 2. And we have y by itself now, and this is equal to 2 over 2 is just 1, 1x one is the same as just an x. And then plus 8 divided by 2, this is just going to be plus 4. And we are ready to graph, right? And now let's have the graph paper right here. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, something like this, should be enough. We begin with the B value, B is equal to positive 4. That means we begin on the y-axis at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's put down a point right here, okay? And next, what's the slope? The number in front of the x. In this case, we have a 1x, so the slope is 1. But then for graphing purpose, we should look at the slope as a fraction. 1 is the same as 1 over 1, so let's put down 1 over 1. Because this way, the 1 on the top tells us to go up one time, and this 1 on the bottom will tell us to go to the right one time. From here, go up once, move to the right one time. And here is another point that we have. And now we just have to connect the dots, right? So now let me just see that right here. And you should definitely be using a graph paper. And once again, I have the PDF of the graph paper in the description for you. And now let's move on to the next one, which is this. I am not ready to graph yet, we have to isolate the y. Let's do that, it's not that bad. 3x plus 6y is equal to 15, and that's minus 3x on both sides. So that this and that will cancel. And this is positive 6y, and this is equal to, this is negative 3x, and that's plus 15. What's next? Divide it by 6, so that they cancel. Right here, divided by 6, divided by 6, right? So, we get y by itself, and this is equal to negative 3 over 6. That will give us negative 1 half. And put a negative on the top, negative 1 half like this. And we have the x, and plus 15 over 6. That will give us plus 5 over 2. Reduce by 3. 3 goes into 15, 5 times. 3 goes into 6, 2 times. Just like this. With this being done, right here, the B value is 5 half. Or if you want, you can use decimal, 2.5. That means on the Y axis, you go up 1, 2. And in between right here, 2.5. Okay? That's 2.5. And the slope, M, is equal to you should have the negative on the top, and that's negative 1 over 2. And remember, the number on the top, this right here, will tell us to go up or down. This is negative, so we go down. From here, we go down one time. And be careful, we are only halfway right here. So when you go down one time, you will be right here in the middle. <laughs> and then from here, we are going to move to the right two times. So from here, move to the right one time, two times. So it will be right here in the middle. 
at the end, connect the dots. So it will look like something like this. Okay. So my graph is not perfect, but you should be though. <laughs> because you have a graph paper. Anyways, I know what the answer is because I designed this question. <laughs> that is the point of intersection. What's the coordinate of that? The x value is negative 1. The y value is 1, 2, 3. 3. <laughs> so this point right here, which is going to be negative 1, comma, 3, x, y, and we are done. So as you can see, this is the first kind of situation. We have one answer to this, right? At the end of the video, I will summarize all three situations for you guys. And now let's check out the next one. So here's the second situation, and let's go right ahead. Look at the first equation, isolate the y. So let's put it down right here. 4x plus 6y, this is equal to 0. We are going to first minus 4x on both sides. So they cancel. And we will have 6y, and this is equal to negative 4x, isn't it? And then divide both sides by 6. So that this and that will be cancelled. And we have y is equal to, what's this? Negative 4 over 6, we can reduce it by 2. 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 6 three times. And that's negative, so let's put down negative 2 on the top over 3. And let's put down the x on the side. That's the equation that we have. And are we ready to graph it? Yes, right? So let's put it down here. So let's see, I want to have 1, 2, 3, something like this should be enough, and then 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, and let's say 1, 2. Okay, first of all, what's the B for you here? We don't have 1, huh? It seems like it. But then you have to remember, we do have the B value, B is equal to 0. We still have to have the y-intercept to begin with. B is equal to 0. On the y-axis, here is where the 0 is. So let's put a point right here. And from here, the slope is negative 2 over 3. This means we go down from here 1, 2, right? And then we move to the right 3 times. So from here, 1, 2, 3. So it looks like we have something like this. And connect the dots. And I will, for you guys, it looks something like this. That's it for the first equation. And now let's move to the second equation, which we have a fraction. But it's okay, we can handle it. Let me write this down. 1 third x plus 1 half y, and this is equal to 1. And we do this pretty much the same way. Let's move the 1 third x to the right-hand side. We can do that by minus 1 third x on both sides. You see, they will cancel also, right? And you see, we have 1 half y. And this is going to give us, let me write this down as the following. This is negative 1 on the top over 3, and then the x on the side. And this is the plus 1. Okay, this is 1 over 2 times y. What should we do to get rid of the 1 half? We are going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1. Or you can look at this as just multiply by 2. 2 and 1 half cancel each other. You will just get the y by itself. And let's multiply this by 2, and let's multiply this by 2. Okay? So this is what we have. And let me write this down nicely for you guys. We have the y by itself, and this is equal to 2 times negative 1 over 3. It's like 2 over 1, so 2 times negative 1. We get negative 2 on the top. And this is over 3. And we have the x. And this part we have plus 2 times 1, which is just a 2. And now we are also ready to graph this one. We do have a b for you. It is equal to positive 2. That means on the y-axis, I go to positive 2, which is right here. And you see the slope m is equal to negative 2 over 3. This slope and that slope are the same, isn't it? And quick review, what does that mean? When we have two lines, if the slopes are the same, we know the lines are parallel. And let me show you. 
So from this point, right, the y-intercept, we go down twice, and then we move to the right three times. So we went down twice, and then we go one, two, three. And this is the second point that we have. And I will just have to connect the dots. It looks like this. As you can see, these two lines are parallel. So you can tell from the equation already. And the question is, do we have any intersection? No, right? Because parallel lines, they never meet. So the best way to respond to this is that because there's no intersection, there is no solution to that. No solution. And as I said, this is the second situation. And I will show you guys one more. And at the end, I will summarize everything together for you guys. And this is the third one. And let's just go right ahead, take this, and put that into the y is equal to mx plus b form. So the first equation, 2x minus a y, this is equal to 16. And let's isolate the y. Subtract 2x on both sides first. Cancel, cancel, and we get a negative a y. And this is equal to negative 2x plus 16. This is negative 8 times y. What do we do? Divide. Divided by negative 8 so that they cancel. Likewise, right here, divided by negative 8. This right here also, divided by negative 8. y by itself. And this is equal to negative 2 over negative 8. We get what? Positive 1 over 4, right? So let's write it down. Positive 1 over 4 x and plus 16 over negative 8 we get minus 2 and we are ready to graph it so let me just put down the graph paper right here for you guys and I'm just going to have let's say 1 2 okay and then 1 2 3 4 something like this should be enough so begin with the b value b is negative 2 that means on the y-axis, we go to negative 2 first, which is right here. And then the slope is 1 fourth. That means we go up one time and then move to the right four times. From this point, go up once and then move to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then F will have another point here. And we are ready to connect the dots. And we will connect the dots like this, right? So here is the first line. And now we just have to do the same thing for the second line. Let me write down 3x minus 12y, and this is 24. Same business. <laughs> minus 3x on both sides. Cancel, cancel. And we have the negative 12y. This is equal to negative 3x plus 24. Now what's next? This is negative 12y, so we have to divide it by negative 12. They're multiplying, and we have to divide to get rid of them, right? So now let's divide this by negative 12, and also divide this by negative 12. We see we will have the y by itself. This will be negative 3 over negative 12. We get positive 1 over 4. So let's put a 1 over 4x. And you see, positive 24 divided by negative 12, we get negative 2. In fact, maybe you guys have noticed this already. They are the same equation to begin with, isn't it? So of course, if you want to graph the same equation, you end up with the same graph anyways, isn't it? M is equal to 1 over 4. But just to show you, suppose you didn't have the white lines earlier, and I'm just going to begin with the B value, which is negative 2, which is right here. Okay, this is done in blue. And then the slope is 1 over 4. Means I go up once and then move to the right four times, right? So I have another point right here. Connect the dots. And you see the two lines lying on top of each other. They overlap, right? So in this case, how many times do they intersect? Infinitely many times. 
So the response for this is that in this situation, okay, the answer to the system of equations is that we will end up with infinitely many solutions. S O L stands for solution, I N F stands for infinite. We have infinitely many solutions. So as we can see, whenever we graph two lines, we may end up with one of these three possible situations, right? For the first one is that the lines will cross each other at exactly one point. We will have just one point of intersection, and the system equation will have one solution. And now let me go over the new terms with you guys. Whenever the system of equations has a solution, we will call that system equation to be consistent. Okay, it is a consistent system of equations. And the word consistent, it just implies that the system of equations has at least a solution. Okay? Has a solution. And the next word I want to tell you guys is that, as you can see, the lines that we did, they were different, right? So, if you have two different lines, that may, will tell us the system is independent. It just tells you that we are working with different lines. All right? So now, let's see the second situation. Well, these two lines, they never meet, right? So in that case, of course, the system of equations has no solution. And now we are going to just kind of play around with these two words. Consistent means the system has a solution. Right now, we don't have a solution. So what does that tell us? What's the opposite of consistent? Inconsistent, right? So right here, we'll call this to be inconsistent. That means we don't have a solution. So it's pretty much just the opposite of that. No solution. And now, earlier for independent, it means that we have two different lines. Right here, we still have two different lines. So of course, it is still called the independent in this situation as well. And now let's look at the last one. We graphed two lines, and they happen to be overlapping, right? They overlap with each other on top of each other. How many solutions do we have? Infinitely many, right? So right here, we have infinite many solutions. So is this going to be consistent or inconsistent? It will be consistent because we have a solution. So this right here, it is a consistent situation. And the last one. The, uh, this right here was independent, that means different lines. But however, these two lines were actually the same. So we must have an opposite word of that, right? So what's an opposite word of independent? Dependent, so right here. This is consistent, and this is also what we call the dependent. It just means that we have the same line. So perhaps I'll write it down right here for you guys. We have the same line, okay? The lines are the same. And then um, inconsistent right here, it means has no solution. And this right here is it. This will summarize all the possibilities that we will have to encounter. That's it. A solution. That's what you have to remember. <laughs>